This is a pretty good class, so we'll do it very systematically and slowly. What is that? Oh, must have found something very old. Oh my God, come on. Wow. Once upon a time, I was twenty twenty. Now is a different story. Hmm. Oh, these are biblical boys. Angels. You want to see the angels? That's how you always look if your if your wings grow up in your armpits. <laughs> you know. But thank God, God didn't give you wings; otherwise, we would not have got aeroplanes. Mm -hmm. What's that? Okay. 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 Keep this for record. This is a great thing for you must admire this. This is this came from who? Tibetans. Tibetan God crushing the evil. Three bears. Okay, put it back in his walking cow. Oh, now people understand me better. See? Even you can read it. <laughs> it says cookies will be served after class for Dev Darshan course seventh birthday after class. After class, after class. Yeah, okay. Why well, she's a lucky girl. We have unannounced. This is it. And blessed are these flowers for the altar. That's fine. Uh, uh, do you know the source of the word power of the prayer? Or you, you do prayer. Do you know what a prayer is? Prayer is when you ask a higher authority to intervene. Is that true? You all agree with me? Yes or no? <coughs> Prayer is when you ask God or some angel, whatever our things get lost we call Saint Anthony, <clears throat> yeah, we find it out. I mean, there's no bad idea to use Christian saints and Hindu saints and Jewish saints. Question is, just use whatever is available. But fact is, you do prayer when you need the intervention of something higher than you. Sometime you are in a prayer because you are desperate. Desperate. Sometime you are in prayer, you are insecure. And sometime you are in a prayer like me, I have nothing else to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> My fun of the prayer is the, what else to do? No, you know. Somebody feeds me, somebody makes my clothes, somebody brings my shoes, somebody do everything. So, in subjective to that gratitude, you develop a habit of prayer. It's not that you don't make money or you're not rich, that's not the problem. Work you must. But living in gratitude is a prayer. So, you have to pray that today I'm in prayer that 
I am very sick, but I am not in the bed. Call it anything. It's a matter of gratitude. Actually, prayer is a gratitude. Once prayer becomes attitude, then you are far person. You are beautiful. Then everything is for you. Then nothing can stop you. And the funniest part is when you are in prayer, in attitude, you are very exalted, you are very gracious, you are very kind. It's automatic, it's not something that you have to learn. You cannot learn. Prayer comes from within, prayer is from the soul. Prayer doesn't come from... It comes from many ideas, but one idea is, this is a prayerful attitude, come to me, get healed. This is a prayerful attitude, give me all your pain, you shall be free. You know how vast claim it is? You have any idea? Instead of, hey, you took away my pencil, who are you? Oh, you didn't return my scarf. Can you believe what we do to each other? We fight for scarves, pen and pencils. <coughs> when somebody wanted a name, gave me a pen. I must have given to somebody. Seven days later, she said, you remember my pen? I said, what was it? She said, I don't remember myself. But I gave you a pen, I didn't get it back. <coughs> I said, very sorry, I'll send you a pen. So I went and I got Cartier pen and sent her. She said, this is not mine. I said, no, it is. <coughs> she said, why this? I said, you gave me what you can afford, I gave you what I can afford. It's a matter of consciousness, it's not a matter of losing pen or taking pen or giving pen. Not at all. Because I feel you felt that I took away your pen. You didn't accuse me of stealing it, but less than that is almost right that I didn't return your pen. And you are very fortunate you remember it. In life, you remember a lot of things. And worst thing in your life which eats you up inside is when you remember your past. That's very anti-God. Yesterday is gone. It's already gone. It's yesterday. It's now you can't pull it back. So what do you do? Pull it back by memory, by fear. You have a concept about yesterday. And it's unfortunate, your knowledge is so poor, the only thing you know is yesterday. Why? Isn't yesterday gone? You have lived one more day. So you have no right to decide your life on yesterday. If we say don't live on yesterday, then you can live on tomorrow. You have a lot of daydreams, you have a lot of thoughts. That's wrong too, because tomorrow will become today and will face you. Every day you face the day, so it will be one of those days. But where is your power, your personal power? personal power of prayer, asking something higher to come in, right? This you have been taught in the Piscean age. That's why religion has failed. Religion should have taught you to call your higher self in prayer, your higher self. Your higher self is easy, is handy, it is you. You can never go wrong, never go wrong. You never feel insulted, you never feel down the hill. You can't. 
because you are calling your higher self. And if you undertake that prayer attitude, you shall have all the knowledge. All it takes a person like me. Ah, it is a crazy day. And that's a statement. It, I said it. It's a crazy day, right? And then I said it. Hmm. Oh me, take me out of the crazy day for my sake. I'm out. See how fast your prayer works. Watch out. Let's <coughs> let us let us uh, play it like Hollywood, right? Put your hands like this. I'm teaching you prayers. And now make a prayer. Oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, whatever that is, uh, come and please help me. Do it. In your own mind, do it right the way you want to do it. Whatever your thing is, just do it. Just experiment the very feeling, concentrate. God, Guru, this is Christ, Buddha, Moses, nobody, everybody. Whichever you feel is yours, please pray on that and say, please help me. Okay? Cut. Now, second. Now, do the same prayer to yourself, to your higher self. Come on. Same, for experiment's sake. To your higher self. Your gracious self, your soul, your spirit, you the greatest. Just for this moment of prayer, you should feel your greatness. Now, cut, relax. Do you understand the difference? What happens when you pray outside you, you can't concentrate. It's very rare mind which can concentrate. You need a focus. But when you concentrate on yourself, it is done on the spot. So may I ask why you were taught to pray outside you? Because we need your money. <coughs> Yes, yes, yes. You are asked to pray outside. Then it doesn't work. Then comes the Pandit. He say, I'll do puja. I'll pray for you. It will take seven ounces of gold, 30 ounces of silver, seven ton of food. I have to do the whole thing. Now you can't afford it that way, time-wise. And you say, okay, what is the account? Oh, $20,000? Okay, here's $20,000. Check, that's it, do it. Now, what happens actually? You are mentally satisfied that you have prayed. You have done prayer to yourself. In between, you have lost $20,000. <laughs> Sociologically, that $20,000 is telling you that you did it for you. There was a one boy, he was very much in love with a girl. Girl was very nice. She was in very much love. One day he went totally out of the way. Out of the way, I'm telling you. And he brought her a very beautiful present. He showed me. I says, my sweet son, why you want to give it to her? Yogiji, I love her very much. I have never done anything. I said, did he ever show you that she wants something? He said, no. Is she not steady? Yeah. Is she not good? Yeah. I said, okay. Give her a present, see what happens. He said, what will happen? I said, I'm here, we'll discuss. That's not the problem. 
So you take this most beautiful present, got a gift wrapped, and I love you, you're here. She opened the gift, she looked at it, and she said, I'm very grateful, but I have talked to you. He already was pre-warned by me. So he said, well, let's go on a cup of tea somewhere and sit down and talk. She went and she said, John, you have a habit to expand yourself beyond your means? I never saw you that side. He said, no, no, I love you. I said, just this ordinary thing. He said, you have in you the instinct of a gambler. My love is steady and your present tells me that you want to convince me. And she said, my love, these are her words, not mine, but she happened to be a good student. She said, my love, when in love people start convincing each other, game has gone wrong. Do you all look into your heart and see how you convince each other you love somebody? You do not know how to love organically. Inorganic with preserved preservatives, right? Is that love? You add sensuality, sexuality, sociological impact, personal in impact and total impact of containing. My dear people, in love everybody is contained. You don't have to do a thing. Love comes from inside. Prayer comes from inside. When love comes from inside and prayer comes from inside, then comes grace. Then you are bright, you are beautiful, you are trustworthy. Your word cannot be measured in money or in presence. Giving is expression. Forgiving is the best impression. But any time you give somebody to impress or hold, you're not giving it. You're pressurizing the situation. Any time you pray from outside than you, you are abnormal. If there is a story of your soul, of your mind, Birtha Oveji ki Gurpeer Daskar. If you have a story of your soul, if you have a thing to do, call on your enlightened self and your enlightener. You will experience miracles. In this brain of yours, <coughs> there is a stem of the brain. <coughs> Not big thing, this much. It's like, like a state, you hold United States and you see little Florida down there, like a little pinky hanging. This is how brain stem is. It will be investigated. That stem is not just a stem. It is your total personality, projection and progression control system. You can be very fortunate if you understand how it works. Please hold your hands like this, lock them and put these two Jupiter fingers up there like this and lock your these uh, thumbs just like this and sit straight. Mm -hmm. 
and think like as you throw a stone in the water and the waves go out similarly your waves are going out personify yourself lead yourself to this meditation consolidate yourself and expand your waves send your waves out like you are a stone dropped in the middle of the water and you know those circles go on and on to infinity Imagine you are on the top of the Mount Everest, sitting and sending the waves to the entire globe. send the waves out you are a beautiful magnetic field and you do vibrate for your good luck and best luck and your best self send the vibes out <coughs> come on come in what are you doing outside just join just mentally see those waves Don't spread thin. Go deeper into it. If you know today what you are doing, then you will know never to be handicapped. You just project project your personal power.
heavier and heavier and powerful and powerful. Project yourself consciously. There is so much tantric energy released right now between you that if you concentrate, you can have fun, which may not be otherwise possible. First step to life is learn to send vibrations out. Become a beacon, a vibratory power of your soul. Let it touch the unlimited shores.
all other powers are useless if you don't have your own power and power of your soul is the pure power let the vibrations go out of you it is your prayer it will meet all challenges unto infinity concentrate consolidate <coughs> you are doing great now consider your spine is like a tube of light it is lit between the base of your neck and your base of your where are you sitting now it is sending out light rays You have one more minute. Please do breath of fire. <coughs> That's good way of awakening. <coughs> For a minute, just heavy breath of fire. Just so that you are balanced 
And now make your hand and shake it like this, like going to the universe. Yep. Now relax. Do you think in in eleven minutes what you can achieve? It doesn't take much of time. It's just a matter of practice. Once this practice is established in you, you shall not have a problem. Problem is when you stand against you. Well, the present problem is solved when you use yourself to solve it. You must reach out for yourself. Somebody asks, I don't know how to reach out. I say, fine. Make a phone call in the house. There were two numbers, from one number to another number, and pick up the other and speak. He said, it's impossible. I said, what, what are you going to lose? It's a local call. <clears throat> so from one phone, the guy called the other number and picked up the other number. This time he was speaking, and that time he was listening, and then he was answering the questions. He said he went crazy. He realized he had been an idiot all these years. I said, well, that's a realization, or I have nothing to say. But you can call your own number sometime. Learn if you want to live in age of Aquarius. Learn to call on yourself. Learn to be yourself. Learn to vibrate. That's the one good thing we all can learn. Let us become prayerful in attitude. Then God will bless you in every field, whatever your field is. Now, may the Thus it is the body which my soul learned, blessed my mind which covers me, and blessed is my soul which lived through the karma. Blessed are the environments which guided me to the dharma. Blessed are the moments when I answer the call of duty. Blessed is all that lives around me because that makes me feel blessed. Thank you very much. Now, you get up and sing to this girl, happy birthday. You have never come to class after so much time you have appeared. <coughs> and let's take advantage of you. Here is she. You can take the phone, microphone, Oh, do hey, do the classic job. You're pretty professional. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Whose birthday is it? It's like David. <laughs> <laughs> Start again. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dave Doshinkar. Now. <laughs> <laughs> all together now. Let's sing, all sing it together now. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Yashinka. It is not difficult. Now give her a piece of advice on her birthday. <laughs> See? <laughs> that beautiful girl. <coughs> yeah. Talk to everything you tell And blessed are you, and may the sweetness of your life bring you strength and grace. Woman without grace and man without courage should never be born. They're worse than the peel of a banana. However, it is never understood by the mankind. There are only two things people have to learn. If you're male, you must be honest with the courage. If you're a woman, you must be honest with your grace. Do not compromise. And then God shall serve you. That's granted. Twenty-four carat, perfect. No hanky panky. Dr. Satkar, your secretary of religion, is that true? Can you use some time to counsel these people? Instantly out of impulse. Huh? Come on. Let's put you on the spot. <coughs> you counsel the entire Hollywood, that's we you know. Here's the mic. Oh, thank you. Cookies. I'm not supposed to be. To curtail the impulse is to stop and think. To stop and think means to call on God. To call on God is prayer. And that's what he was talking about tonight. If you use your power of prayer, you can change your life. And it only takes a second to stop and think and pray and it'll stop the impulse. Sanam. That was, that was very quick and sweet. Uh, I have a habit which you must have noticed. It's not that people don't think I'm wrong and people do not think I'm worst and people do not accuse me of a lot of things. That's not true. A lot of times, <coughs> whether I'm innocent or not, that's not the point. Point is some people do not have the caliber to accept things in the manner, in the intention, in the honesty they are said and told. So they react.
but the best thing is you don't react so once somebody said to me i was in berkeley university teaching a class long time ago a man got up with a knife and started circling over me you know there were people in security they could have eaten him alive and i said watch anyway he calmed down he apologized ever ended they asked me we are your security officer how the come you did not let us act I said, for him, I am a pretty trained officer. I mean, say, I knew there is a knife on me. If he, I, I would have just felt it, I would have got him. I didn't have that fear. <coughs> But if you would have acted, then it would have been a scene in the university. Let's avoid the scene. Similarly, when somebody attacks to you, you send the vibration to the universe. Everything will fade. It will go away. The power you consume in reaction is almost a life force which you cannot reproduce. That's why all the movies are now. eating up adrenal glands they are creating so much impact you can't believe it but let's understand one thing within us there lives the most calm serene lake of wisdom most beautiful powerful a pond of precise kindness compassion clarity let's understand and let's dive into it within ourselves well next week we'll meet you again as they will fix it up we should best of night But just don't jump up on your feet and start going. You are not yet together. I mean, don't take the risk. What I'm saying. So talk to each other, relax, and then go home. Tuesday, huh? Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh, Tuesday and Wednesday together. <coughs> okay. Your poem. Your poem. Come on, good day. The best poem of yesterday. God waits on the steps. Each morning for sadhana they come to the door, their bright eyes shining in the electric lights, while together they pass the last of the night, bringing joy to each soul who comes to pray. They honor the sangat by night and by day, and with their tails they sweep the floor. Patiently they wait as they peer through the glass, longing to enter yet they seem to know not this time with devotion they come quieter than the children who whine humble as we should be should be grateful for whatever they receive then with a simple nuzzle or lick our tensions they relieve and with gratitude they take prasad from all who pass each sunday morning they arrive before me humbly they wait at the gurdwara door asking only for a touch or prasad nothing more i could learn a lot from the depth of their devotion as their quiet humility fills me with emotion and as and is unequaled here by any who i see though they don't really speak they must have a lot to say they observe us coming and going passing out and in they have watched us grow watched us struggle and win watched us suffer and laugh and cry through loss and gain They are always with us 
sharing our joy and pain. And I always miss them whenever I'm away. Wow, Ned. You're pretty getting good. The art of life is to art is to touch the heart. You're doing pretty good. Well, have you eaten the cookies? Well, good night. Move slowly. I 